Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel. I have a previous video which uses the same clips as the one that I'm showing you right now. This here is part of that previous video. In that video, I, which I will link down below, I talked about how I no longer liked my planner, which was the day on 2.6 pages, A5 slim disc bound that I have been making for myself since July 2021. At least that size and my use of the disc bound started in July 2021, but I have actually been making my own planner pages since 2013. If you have been on my channel long enough, you will see the many iterations that my planner has gone through over the years. And so the latest iteration is this one. This is the A5 super duper wide <laughs> when in landscape mode or the A4 short if in portrait mode. And in that video, I made only enough pages for August 7 through 14, just enough for exactly a week because I wanted to just try it out, see if I can be happy with it. And that's where that video ended. After I made the video, I decided to place these seven sheets into this old clipboard that I've had for a while, which I actually really like. It has an external pocket at the back for stashing slips of paper, and I used to use this clipboard for keeping loose leaf notes when I'm studying. And the plan for my planner was to keep the loose leaf sheets on here. And because this is very, very thin, this can go into my everyday tote, which already fits a 13 inch MacBook Pro, like I showed in a previous video, which I will link down below. So for sure, it can also hold just a thin clipboard like this. And because it is loose leaf, I can shuffle the pages around. When a specific day is over, I can place it at the back like so. And I can fold out the weekly tip in, which will be visible when I flip through the sheets for the day. That was the basic idea. That was the plan. And I was really looking forward to this because on the days leading to August 7, when I was still on the day on 2.6 pages, I found that I really wasn't even using that old planner. I, I wasn't even looking at that planner at all. I would just list tasks on the notes app on my iPhone and proceeded from there. I didn't even track anything. So I was looking forward to this, but then later on I thought, why do I need to bring around a clipboard? Why don't I try digital planning again? I used to do digital planning in 2019 and I will link a video down below and it was super convenient for me. So I thought there's no harm in trying it again. I already know how to create the files and I already have the software and equipment and the apps that I needed. So that's what I did. This is just the same file that I used to print the pages that you saw earlier. This is it. This is this is it. I never created a new file. But for the digital version, I had to break them up into files that contain only a week each because I need to be able to archive the files week by week. However, my archive folders are segregated and labeled by month. So for the week that is split into two months, I also split the file. Like here is the file for August 28 to 31. That is Monday through Thursday. And here is the file for September 1 to 3. That is Friday through Sunday. These two different files will go into separate file folders when archived. One will go into August and the other one will go into the folder for September. I also even kept the weekly task list right here. <laughs> this is the same file that I used for the printed version. And as you can see, it is still laid out on half letter, which I explained why in a previous video. But for the purposes of trying out this digital planner, I didn't even bother to resize the, uh, the, the paper size. That's fine. I zoom in anyway. It saves me the time and energy keeping the file layout this way for now. I might change the size of the paper eventually, but I don't know yet. So I rendered all of the files as PDF. 
I initially laid them out on pages and then I exported them as PDF and then uploaded them from my laptop to my Google Drive. And then I went to my phone and downloaded the file from Google Drive to GoodNotes on my phone. For the pen, I bought this Gujadoc stylus. This is actually very cheap. This is less than 700 Philippine pesos, which converts to about 12 or 13 US dollars. I will link this item down below. And by the way, when I was on digital planning before in 2019, I also used a stylus, which was way more expensive because this Gujadoc pen did not exist yet in 2019. Back in 2019, I used the Wacom Bamboo Pen, which I also unboxed in a video, which I will link down below. And that pen did work well, as it should, because it's a very good brand. When I left digital planning behind, I also resold that pen, and I still got a good price for it. It was quite expensive too, and I have to admit, it gave me some level of anxiety, because I was always afraid of losing the pen, or dropping it, or wrecking it. So when a cheaper pen came around that can do the same thing, how can I say no? <laughs> this is the packaging that my new pen came in. It is quite nice actually. The box includes a pen sleeve, which I actually do use because I toss this into a pocket inside my bag. It has a user manual, but it's really very straightforward. This pen is not Bluetooth. There is no pairing that is needed. It really just replaces your fingertip. It charges with a USB-C cable, which it also comes with. And here is the pen itself. It looks very nice. The build quality is quite good and it has some weight to it that I like. It comes with a copper head tip and it has two options, two sizes for the tip, the 1.5 millimeter tip and the one millimeter tip. I chose the one millimeter tip for more precise handwriting. Here is the port for charging. It has a little cover that I always keep on. To turn the pen on, I just need to touch the top of it like so. I hope you can see the tiny blue light that comes on and off to let me know that the pen is either on or off because otherwise there, there's no way of knowing. And because it's so easy to accidentally touch the top of the pen, I slide it into the sleeve top and first like so, so that I know for sure that it's turned off when it's inside the sleeve. And so far, this digital planning is working so well and I really enjoy using it. Let me just show you the pages that I have already filled in for August 7 because when I'm making this video, it is already the morning of August 8. I have filled out the day on my phone using GoodNotes and the Gujadoc pen and then exported it as a PDF back up to Google Drive and then downloaded it from Google Drive to my laptop and I opened the file with Acrobat Reader. Of course, there is still some information that I need to write down here, mainly for the tracking on the left half of the page, but the right half of the page is almost, almost completely filled in, and I had a lot of fun using this. I used the type function of GoodNotes to type in the words, which is just better for readability, and I used the pen only for scribbling those lines on the 24 hour time tracking and for shading in the circles on the tracking boxes on the left side of the page. And can you see the rightmost edge of the page? I even managed to place my side reminder tabs on there, just like in my physical planner. I think they are so cute. I was already ready to totally let go of the side reminder tabs for digital planning, but I realized that I actually needed them. I had gotten so used to them already, and that's why I need them, I suppose, for a super quick visual indicator that something out of the ordinary was going on for a particular day. I have a video explaining my side reminder tabs in detail, and I will link it down below. So for now, I can say that this is the planning method that I will be using for the foreseeable future. It works. I look at my planner now as I should, and I actually enjoy doing it this way, and I really like the pen. I no longer have to 
print and cut every single page, which saves me time and energy and cost as well. So I now like my planner again, which came just in time because I have so much to do, just so much to do. And some of it even involves travel lots of things to plan for so it's crucial to have a planner and planning method that works and which you actually have fun using i think our planner should not add to our anxiety i think our planner should diminish our anxiety about everything else that's my personal opinion what do you think let me know in the comments and that is my little video for you today thanks for watching bye